Hi, I'm Colin. I'm Chelsea. I'm Ryan. And I'm Drew. And we're the Gamesmiths, and we're here to learn how to play Vigilante. And to start, Ryan's going to kick off with the rules. All right. So, Vigilante. The city was full of crime and terror since the inmates from Eastside Penitentiary freed themselves with their newfound powers. Will you be the one to establish order, or will you join them in seizing control of the city, its wealth, and crushing those that would stand against them? In Vigilante, you'll see, assemble a team of heroes and encounter unique villains to accomplish your mission, whatever that may be. Um, so we have different scenarios. The one that we picked here is Brought to Justice. It's the normal kind of standard game mode. And uh, superhuman <coughs> thieves and murderers have escaped from Eastside Penitentiary. Uh, find them and put them back in jail at once. Um, and uh, so that's what we're, what we're doing here. Um, we've got it set up here. So uh, if you look down in the corner, this is for four players, and it says we're going to have two good, one neutral, and one evil. Um, there are a couple different types of... There's only one type of good uh, hero, and they always have the same mission, which is for each good player, or for each good player, good players must jail seven villains. So when the game is over, uh, there's going to be two good heroes in our scenario, so they're going to want a total of 14 uh, villains jailed to win. There are two different types of neutral villains. Uh, one's the Profiteer. They have to jail four villains and have the most influence among alive heroes at the end of the game. Uh, and then uh, there's the Cultist, which each opponent has at least one defeated hero. So those are the two neutral. So one of us is going to be neutral. And <coughs> they win or lose on their own independently of good or evil. So good and neutral can win or evil and neutral can win. Um, hmm. But good and evil obviously are opposing each other and only one of them can win. Uh, there are two types of evil. One is the assassin and good players must have less than seven villains jailed. So basically, at the end of the game, if the heroes fail, then the villain wins. Uh, and then there's Mastermind, which is have at least ten villain jailed. Um, if you're the Mastermind, you have to have at least ten villains jailed at the end of the game. If you do, good players lose. So you, by yourself, have to get ten villains in jail. Or, yeah, I'm sorry, get ten villains in jail uh, to win, and then the good players lose. But like I said, neutral can win either way. So what we would do at this point is everybody has kind of their starting stuff and then we would um, shuffle up and deal. I should have grabbed another good. I didn't grab enough goods. Um, but you know we'd shuffle up and deal to everybody their identities. Um, and so everybody would get their secret identities. Go ahead and show them. They're not going to be uh, they're not going to yeah. be relevant. We'll pretend mine's good too because we don't have, because we should have two good ones. Um, so then at that point, everybody has these number of chips. You'll see on the card, it says how many of each token you should take. So I put two in front of everybody. You're going to have two that match your alignment. So if you're good, you're going to take two good, mm -hmm. and then one evil, one neutral. And, you know, you can do the math. So it says for everybody. So throughout the game, you'll have a lot of opportunities to check someone's alignment and you'll never really know for sure because everybody has at least one of each but the more you check the same person's alignment the better you can figure out okay. what their actual alignment is so it's there to uh you know it's there to let us kind of check everybody's alignment a lot kind of a lot there's there's a decent number of chances to peek at somebody's alignment but you never know it's still not really reliable information um so we'll all take those, and 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 that's just part of the setup. Um, and then we gotta set up everything. Then you will decide um, <coughs> which one of your heroes after you figure out if you're good or neutral, because that you know can matter. Everybody has two starting heroes, and you'll pick your starting hero, um, and they each have different turns. So. Uh, this one it says, instead of performing to jail action, you may place one damage on shard. Uh, and then this one is, at the end of 
uh, or I can choose at the end of your fourth turn, you may take a die away from another player. Which one is um, that, these ones? Yeah, so Blue? everyone should have two of those. And you just kind of pick one and just go ahead and throw one down for now. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. And you're going to put it in the hero one spot. Um, and that's just, that's you pick your starting hero. Um, and you keep your identity secret. Um, so nobody knows, obviously, you don't want that kind of thing. And then we have this starting nice. player. Uh, the starting player token, which will just pass depending on who the starting player is. Um, so at the starting, uh, at the round start, the starting player is going to pull um, two event tokens, selects one and places it face up on the events, and puts the other in the bag. So basically, this is your opportunity to like secretly look at. Okay, I can either do you know one of these good things, or one you know I can choose which one of these kind of things happen this turn. And I'm like, oh, I have two bad choices. I guess I got to put a bad one out, you know. But it mm -hmm. it gives you a chance to kind of screw with the game. Um, so whatever, I'll take one out and I'll put it. We already have jailbreak, so I'll put the other one out. We'll put firefight out. Um, then you're allowed to take any combination of four actions, including multiples of the same action. These are represented by your little lightning bolts here to remind you that you have four actions to do each turn. You can draw, which is take the top card of the main deck, or the agency deck if you've jailed three or more villains. So uh, these cards are, are better, basically. And once you have three villains in jail, you can start to choose to draw off this deck instead of the purple deck. Um, attack, you can attack the top card of the villain stack. We'll do that. talk about that in a second. You can recruit, which is here we have a hero market, and it's kind of... Uh, each, a lot of these, okay, so a lot of the cards in your hand will have like influence, so this guy says five influence, um, which means I could spend, so this one has seven, seven, eight. These are their costs for purchasing them and adding them to your team. So I have eight here, I can discard five and three. And for these cards, you can either use them, so research would be replace the hero market, so I could get rid of those and get some new ones if I didn't like them, or I can use it as five influence. You don't get to do them for both. So this would give me a total of eight influence, and then I could add this hero to my team, and you always got to just keep adding them to the next slot, you know, one, two, three, four. And then I'd just have a second tier hero as a part of my team. So that's what recruiting does. <coughs> Heal, it removes one damage from one of your heroes. They all have health. These are damage cubes when they get damaged. Um, inventory, take as many equipment as you like from uh, your heroes back into your hand so you can equip your heroes. We'll go to that in a second. Uh, and then damage, place one damage on another player's hero. So you can, we can just attack each other if we want. Mm. Uh, three, you're going to secretly roll your dice behind the, your event screen and put one in the middle of the board for the event. Um, so, and we'll go into those a little bit more. And then everybody just gets to do that. So since I'm the first player, I'll get to do that first. I'll get to do my four actions. And then I'll pass to Chelsea, and she'll do, and so on and so forth. And then the next round, Chelsea will get to start. Um, oh, starting players move counterclockwise. So I guess the next yeah. time, Drew would get to start. Uh, what it uh, so um, you're going to resolve any events that are triggered and take the dice back, and that just kind of basically matches your die. So... Uh, for fighting, when you decide to attack as an action, you're going to flip the top card of the villain deck. So um, there are three types of villain cards in here, and the further down you get, the tougher the villains get. So there's villain level one, villain level two, villain level three. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see, you will see the backgrounds change, so you can tell. Uh, when you decide to attack, you'll flip the top card of the villain deck, and... Um, Read the game text that will happen, if any. So to jail, move the start player token to another player. It doesn't move at the beginning of the next round. Um, so that's just a, that is, that is this, you know, this character, if it's sent to jail, this is what happens. And yeah, the start player token is what I would have because I'm going first here. So what happens is this will flip over. And it d deals damage to your heroes based on the corresponding position. So 
two damage to hero one for this one and one damage to hero two. So then I right now, well, let's say I did buy this like I said I did. Um, so I'm going to spend one turn to, to buy that. And then I would take two damage to shard here and then one damage to burst. Um, and then, uh, then my heroes will, I add up all the attack on my heroes. So I have two attack on that one and one attack on that one and I deal it back to the villain. Um, if the hero is... Um, if a hero is killed by his first attack, you, you lose there. You know, if, if this would have killed Shard, I wouldn't have gotten Shard's attack power in that because the villains attack before the heroes get to. Um, and that's based on their health. On their health, yeah. Um, if you're successful, you complete the two jail or bonus effects, if any, and then place the villain in your jail. If you're not, you place the villain at the bottom of the villain deck. So this was a four. I would only have three attack, so I wouldn't have been successful, so this would just go to the bottom of the villain deck. Uh, but had I killed it, it would stay in jail villains, and then, you know, seven and good guys win the game. Three, I can start getting stuff out of there, so you want to have jailed villains. Um, Even if you are a villain? You want to have those? Oh, uh, I mean... Eh, only if you're the mastermind. Yeah, it depends. Um, yeah. I think, but you, I don't think you want to make it obvious that you're, right. you're the yeah. villain. <laughs> and I probably, like, if I'm the villain, I probably at least want, like, three... You know, I probably at least want a couple so I can draw out a vigilante deck or something like that. I don't know. Honestly, mm -hmm. I haven't, haven't quite figured out my, my strategy yet. So, <laughs> uh, one time use an ambush card. So, those were kind of the ones that I saw here. Um, have, uh, we already went over this, how, how recruiting works. Um, when your hero takes damage equal to its health, including any equipment bonuses, it is defeated. Discard any, uh, or discard any equipment attached to it and place it in your defeated heroes pile. If you have three or more defeated heroes, you cannot contribute dice to the event. Um, so during their turn, four actions, play a card. <laughs> At any point during your turn, I'm sorry, uh, during a player's turn, they complete their four actions. Their turn's not over uh, until they contribute their die. There are a number of actions that are free and don't cost one of your lightning bolts, which is play a card. At any point during your turn, you can play a card from your hand. Uh, ambush cards may be played during other players' turns. Um, let's see, I don't know if I have any ambush ones here but um, from the main deck yeah so from your hand that, that mm -hmm. you have um, you can just at any point on your turn you can play a card from your hand and like I said ambush cards can be played on other players turns during your uh, during your turn you may contract or trade so you can just trade cards if you want to and um, some game text will grant free draw actions here your heroes and more Unless it says it requires an action, it's free. Um, equipment can be drawn from the main deck or the agency. So, like right here, is uh, war. I don't remember which one is the main deck. The, the purple one is the main deck, and you can draw from that using one of your actions okay. for a turn. And then the agency is just like a better version of the main deck that you can only draw from once you've jailed three villains. Okay. Can you do the the thing more than once? What? Action? An action? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so you have four and you can do four you can of retreat, one thing. Retreat. Yeah, four any, you can do. Correct. You can draw four cards. You can attack four times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, whatever. Any combination, I'm not going to list them all. It would be boring. <laughs> um, <laughs> equipment can be drawn in... Uh, da, 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 da. So equipment looks like has a little gun icon on it um, mm -hmm. and gives boost sometimes to attack or to health. So I've got Mittens and War, um, mm -hmm. and sometimes they have some other. Whenever an opponent contributes a five, you may damage one of their heroes if you've defeated a villain. So they have some extra text on them, too. Uh, playing equipment is free. Each hero can only carry one equipment unless otherwise stated, uh, and you discard any equipment that is attached. And they're defeated. Yeah. Uh, vigilante... 
features a unique event mechanic. Each round a new event token is placed on the board. They're always added and never removed. So uh, in addition to their effect, they also act as a round counter. Event tokens are placed like here, uh, like you saw. Um, two, you draw two, put one down. At the end of each player's turn, they secretly roll their dice behind their screen so uh, people can't see and place one on the board and it doesn't trigger only at the end of that round. So you will, you know, I'm gonna steal Drew's, oh, here's mine, I can't see them. They were hiding behind my own screen, silly me. So I just, I just rolled, well, for being more interesting, let's say I rolled a one and a two. So I have the option of putting either one of these down. Um, at the end of the round, at the end of the round, each event with a matching die triggers for all players. If there is more than one event with the same number, they all trigger. If two of the same die are placed, only the first takes effect. All dice are retrieved at the end of the round. Any dice that don't match events are considered safe. Um, so essentially what we're going to do is like, I'll take my turn and I'll put, I'll, I'll say like two. Uh, firefight, damage a hero, jailbreak, free a villain. And I can decide which one I want and say like, okay, I'm going to do jailbreak, free a villain. And then Chelsea will go on her turn, and she'll. Drew will. No, we we still take, we oh, still take our turns request. normally, so we're we're still take we still take our turns, but the who how it goes first passes the other way. Uh, okay. So so like oh, I go I first, see, yeah. and then all of us take a turn, and then I pass this to Drew, and Drew goes first, and all of us take a turn, and then he'll pass it to Colin, and then Colin uh... passes it to you. So, um, but then, so then everyone will take their turn and like Drew will go like that, okay. And then, you know, Chelsea, I don't know where your die is so I can't steal it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, there we go. So like, yeah, and then like, you know, you'll roll a six and, uh, uh, well, whatever to say, Chelsea put down a two. So then at the end of each round, uh, then all of these resolve and we have to deal with them. So Collins is a six and it doesn't match anything. So it's just nothing happens. It's, a, it's considered a safe one. Um, even though there are two here, uh, this is actually, it only it will only happen once. Um, but they'll both go back to us, and then this will happen because there's one here as well. So a jailbreak and a firefight will happen. And we'll go into those a little more as we're playing. We don't need to get into them all now. Um, so... Um, Important rules, agency, in order to draw there, you must have at least three jail villains. Um, if you're able to draw here due to game text, you may discard this rule. So if something says draw three cards from the agency deck, you can do it, even if you don't have the jail villains. Uh, when, you have, when you have access to the agency, you may search either this deck or the main deck. Um, equipment, unless otherwise stated, each hero can only have one some equipment has special tags that only trigger if another card references them, like animal or mechanical. Whenever a villain is freed, you place the first villain that you placed in your jail on the bottom of the villain deck. Freeing simply refers to going back to the pile, while moving villains is taking from one player's jail and putting it in another player's jail. Cards that prevent freeing do not prevent moving. Um, when a player gets to view another player's allegiance, only that player gets to see that token. At any time, a player may say what they saw, whether it's accurate or not. After viewing the allegiance token, it is shuffled in with the others, unless the game dictates otherwise. If a card flips an allegiance token face up, it is flipped face down immediately afterwards and shuffled in with the others. So flipping up just means everybody sees it, but you still get to keep it um, down. New heroes are always placed in numeric order and cannot be moved at a later date. If Hero 1 is defeated, for example, the next hero becomes Hero 1, but Hero 2 stays where Hero 2 is. Um, okay, oh yeah, so the, the, there's the icons, that's what I thought. Okay, so Ambush is, do we have those on here? I don't know if you have those on here, okay. So, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. Ambush is these orange ones that have like this kind of mask up in the corner, it's kind of like Warshak Tech test mask or whatever, mm -hmm. they're these orange ones. They're, they're the ones that can be played whenever the condition is fulfilled, and they generally, they protect players from negative effects. So anti-vigilante mob here, if an opponent damages one of your heroes, move a villain from their jail to yours. 
Mm. So that's a and that and that's an ambush that can be done on somebody else's turn. Um, equipment is the one with the guns. We've already gone over that. Uh, <clears throat> these are found in the agency and main deck. These are also found in the agency and main deck. Hero cards are here. They have the mask. They're the blue ones. They can be. You get your starter one, and then they can be recruited. Identity cards are dealt at the beginning of the game. We've been over that, kept secret at all times. We only have one scenario. And then there are these purple trash can ones that are one-time use. They can be played only on your turn, and they're put in the discard pile as soon as they're played, and just do what they say on them. Deal two damage to another player's hero. Um, replace, the he or, you know, replace the hero market, which is, you know, just get rid of the hero market, replace it. Uh, villain cards are always placed face down so you don't know who you're attacking. They deal damage to you, then you damage them. Uh, and then everything else just kind of goes into just breakdown of stuff. But that is the game. Are there any questions? So we're just kind of going to keep going. Oh, and I'm sorry. Uh, something I glossed over is uh, this game lasts for seven rounds, according to the event that we have here. Hmm. Um, so okay. as soon as round seven is over, the game is over. That's when we decide who won. Good guys most. need to have seven. Bad guys need good guys to have less than seven. So. Um, so when you like recruit a hero, does another one get drawn? Like, do they move over? Like that? Yeah, you can you can pick any one that you want. Yeah, it, it, the left to right thing or doesn't just, matter. But yeah, you just, just so there's always three. Them. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. And the draw one discard that. is it a, or, like the uh, the player turn thing? One more time. What was it? Draw and discard. Uh, the, the looking at two events and placing one face up. What happens to the other one? It goes back, back in the back. back. Okay. So you just get a look and you're just like, oh, hacking discard a card or yeah. jailbreak free a villain. Well, then you can decide, do we add a three or do we have double jailbreak, sure. you know, on okay. one. And then you and put so the other also back in the we bag. Know, so And if, this is all, you know, hidden. If you're starting and there's seven rounds, we know that the seventh round will start with Colin? Uh, yeah, and you can just track here. Because we start with one event and we're going to add as one every turn. As soon as there's turn. seven. So as okay. soon as there's eight, actually. Eight. Because okay. we're going to start with one. So, yeah, we can also, like they said, use the event tokens to, to track the amount of rounds. So we're looking, okay. at, we're looking at eight. So, um, And then when we roll our dice, like, nobody's supposed to see that, right? We do it behind the correct. screen. So, I mean, so you can could, couldn't you at that point just put whatever, whatever number down? you want? Uh, yeah, I mean... Like is that you, you can cheat, I a guess. Strategy or <laughs> no? I mean, that, I think that would be cheating. Okay. Uh, I think you're supposed to pick, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm not be honest, yeah. but well, I, I'm a little curious as to why you're being secretive about yeah. that. About which event you're triggering, because Probably. if you're a bad guy, like if you roll a one and a six, like right there, I rolled a one and a three. If I'm a bad guy, I want to choose one because everybody has to free a villain at the end yeah. of the turn. If right. I'm a good guy, I want to choose three. And okay. and it's a it's a hidden identities game, so yeah, you guys yeah, don't yeah. know if I'm good or bad. So that's I think that's the motive of it. But yes, I okay. suppose I could just cheat. Um, <laughs> oh, so you wouldn't play the one if you didn't want to. Yeah. Play the three. Okay. Right, because right. your character has a different goal right. than everyone else's characters. And all right. And then what are Explain these a little better. Like I know you get to pick yours based on your character. You have them in your hand, and then somebody checks it. What's that? So like, whatever you are will tell you how many of each that you get. Each each of these. Yeah. Yeah, but what do we do with these? Yeah. You hold on to them, and then like, so there's a. Uh, let me see. I think there's. Let me see if there's. Find a good example of. Okay, right here we go. So there's this hero, Camellio, action, which means I have to pay one of my energy to do it. Once per turn, check a player's allegiance. So I'm going to say, Colin, I'm checking your allegiance. And you like shuffle them up, and I just get to pull one at random and, and see your allegiance. Okay. And so since you're going to have, if you're good, you'll have two good, you know, whatever. And eventually, I'm going to have to check a bunch, but if I check you a bunch, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure. Like, okay. I usually pull neutral when I get Colin, so I think he's neutral or whatever. So, um, 
Yeah. Sure. Word. So, yeah. Uh, any other questions? I don't think so. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm All good. right. Those are the rules. We'll see you in the game.